VIP access access. with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. This is season three of my podcast and this is episode three. I'm sitting with an amazing individual and artist from South Africa. I'm coming to you live from Johannesburg and I really love to be in this country. Since I landed, it's just been an amazing explosion of culture, music, fashion, art. And one thing about the artists in this country, they don't play when it comes to the talent and the music and the expression. Guys, the live music music hits different right here and I'm very honored to be speaking to one of the greats when it comes to live music performance and also recorded music we are going to talk about his most recent album I'm a clasher I hope I've said it right he's going to correct me if I'm wrong but I'm so honored to be sitting here with the one and only Bonkezi with my bandla hi how are you (laughs) Uh, I'm good. Oh my God! Did I butcher all the words? No, you <laughs> did not butcher butcher it. Um, um, yeah, you did not butcher us. But welcome to South Africa. Oh, thank you. I'm also happy to hear that you're having a good time. Ish. Yeah, Ish. I'm happy. You guys, ah, the culture—it's happening. Like to be in the club, to be uh, you know at the festivals. I went to Kunye. Yeah. The people are so happy. The music. Yo, do you like performing in South Africa more than other countries? Or what for you stands out, you know, that makes South Africa stand out? Let me ask that, like that. Yeah, I do love uh, playing in South Africa. It took a while for me to be sort of uh, accepted and embraced in the live circuit. Mm. But now that it's happening, yeah, I think uh, what stands out for me is the, it's more like an interaction with the audience. Mm. Like, um I don't know, I, I, especially versus Europe. It's more like in Europe, it's more sit down and really listening to the music, which is great. But in South Africa, people stand, people dance, people shout, people sing along. And I don't know if that's because of the language, of the language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's an African thing. Even for me, like uh, last last year, was it last year? Yes, last year I went to Saudi Arabia for some huge concerts, but then... The people were just like, not really dancing. And I was like, you feel like, you look like you all want to move, but you're not moving. And then I just missed to be in the continent because you know how crazy we get. Like, we just yeah, bust into yeah, moves. Yeah. We're screaming. We're ululating. Like, yeah, ah! yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the things we do. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. I, yeah, I reckon it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an African thing, I guess. Yeah. Like, to not have, like, to be part of the performance, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, fa- first things first. Yeah. Say say your name, your first name. How do I say it? Yeah, you said it right. It's Bongeziwe Mabandla. Mabandla. And I like Mabandla. Also Bongeziwe, I like. What do your names mean? My name basically means uh, there is more, like more children. So it's like an addition. It's like uh, more children or more great great grandchildren. Yeah. Mm. So it's like an addition. Interesting. Interesting. That's really cool. Um, And I want to go to the... um, I don't know where we start. Before we get into your albums, the most recent album, I want to go back to, um, you know, the foundation of your career. You know, before your debut album dropped in 2013, what were you doing? And and at what point in your career do you feel like you got accepted in the SA industry? Because you talk about now I am accepted and you are actually one of the, you know, fastest selling artists when it comes to tour touring, but that wasn't always the case. And that's why we're sitting here to talk about the journey to becoming who you are today. Sometimes when someone will read a story on Mabandla or Bongezi, where they'll be like, oh yeah, obviously it worked for him, but it didn't always work for you. So do you remember, you know, that journey and kind of the breakthrough? Yeah, of course I remember. How could I forget? (laughs) Uh, Before music, I was actually uh, trying to be an actor. I'd actually come to Johannesburg to be an actor. And uh, halfway through my course, I found music. I found the music scene in Johannesburg. And I started like, you know, um, being excited about music and also having the opportunities to sort of make music like with on my laptop and at school a bit. So that's when I, I, I sort of switched to music, but things didn't happen for me until I met uh, Paolo Chibanga from 340 Mill. Uh, he's from Mozambique, but they had a band here in South Africa. 
So I started working with him and that's how I would say my music career started. But it also took a while since from when I met him to actually releasing my first album in 2012. And that was that album's name was Umlilo. Yeah. And what does Umlilo mean? Ah, uh, fire. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, fire. Okay. And um, in terms of the type of music you do, you know, it's very experimental. It's folk music. Why was this your choice of music? What were the inspirations that led you to this? The type of music that you make? Yeah, I think. Um, uh, I think with every artist, or I assume with every artist, mm -hmm. you try and make music, the the type of music that you like, mm -hmm. or that you grew up listening and that you sort of resonated to. So I, you know, on the folk side of it, I definitely resonated with um, artists like Tracy Chapman, uh, Lauren Hill, those like very soulful, like guitar, acoustic artists, India Ari. Bob Marley. So, you know, I knew when I, that if I ever had the opportunity to make music, that I would, you know, do something similar. But now I feel like my music is changing and I'm experimenting with, with um, different expressions of music. So there's uh, definitely feels of electro now, yes. um, R&B, just like it's a mashup now. I like it. I like it. And what's life without, you know, incorporating change and experimenting? It's, it would be so boring. Yeah. And since the first album to your next second album before your fourth, fourth, um, yeah, fourth album, which came out this year, yeah. what would you say was the biggest um, shift between the debut, your debut album and the last two albums? Yeah, I would say I feel like with each album, it, it keeps growing and getting better. And um, this album just came out now, so it's still, um, you know, finding its legs. But definitely the previous album before this one, the Imini album, uh, which is like a love album, which talks about relationships. I think this is album really shifted a, a lot for me, especially in South Africa. And I feel it's mostly because people could sort of relate a lot to the kind of life stories that I was talking about. And Imini actually means times. Uh, no, or which means. one is the Times album? Uh, the Times is Amaklasha, which is my current oh, album okay. now. But oh, Imini uh, means something similar. It means days. So it's okay. like a, it's like a tied in, a tied in. It's the times and the days. Okay. So okay. it's all about moments and like experiences and putting those experiences together. They make times and they make days. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. It is the mini album that actually won Best Alternative at the summer. Yes, and my previous and the previous album to that, Mangaleso. So yeah, those two albums won Best Alternative albums. Yeah. It must have been really amazing for you to see your work, you know, being um, recognized on such a big award ceremony and platform. Yeah. Um, I mean, what does that mean to you? Do you care? Because a lot of artists say, I don't care about our words and stuff like that. But I know Summers is a biggie in South yeah, Africa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think um, it validated a, 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 a long-term dream of being South African and, you know, watching TV and watching my favorite artist at the summer awards. And, and I think it does kind of say that, Hey, uh, people are watching, we recognize your work. And I think it's important for an artist to feel that their work is recognized. But with saying that, I feel there's a lot of great artists, you know, that don't have summers. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's always an indication of, um, like you're a great artist mm -hmm. or you're not, uh, but I'm just grateful that, for any sort of appreciation yeah i want to talk about your most recent album amak clasha yes. um what was the inspiration to make this album um and what 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 what, what did you take in um consideration for the people you wanted to work with on this album you know straight from the writing the production and even the distribution yeah, this album really came through at the heat of lockdown here in South Africa. Um, 
and I decided to make it a similar theme as my previous album because it was so soon after my album came at the beginning of the lockdown. And so I started writing sort of in the middle of, of it. So um, I think that was the mo one big thing that I decided that I, I, I want to continue the same sort of conversation on the previous album. So it's very much a, a love album and it talks about relationships and love. But what I, I think I gathered from this album more than anything, it's also, even though it's about, about love, it's also at the end, I think the conclusion is very much also about self love and self realization, which I, I think is also quite an important topic. Yeah. And there's a song um, from this album, Noba. Uh, Bangatini, yeah. which I really love. Um, what does it sing about? Because that's the beauty of music. You know, you love your artists and what they're singing, and you sometimes you don't understand, but yeah. you feel the emotion. So tell me more about the writing and what the message is in this song. So that song is written about the idea about um, separating from someone mm -hmm. and uh, being apart, and then sort of coming back together and trying to work things. And the reason I thought this was a powerful subject is because I started to see that in my friends mm -hmm. and in the circles um, that you do find that couples sometimes try and rework their relationship. And uh, it's always such an interesting moment where you rebuild on your love or reconnect. And that song is about that, you know, reclaiming love. And that's why Noba Bangatini means no matter what they say. And it's about like forgetting what people have to say and forgetting logic and sort of following your heart. Yeah. Interesting. Um, in terms of, you know, South African radio media scene and the industry itself, do you feel like there's enough room for artists as yourself who you know stay true to the genres um, and even the messages you know you're not just writing a song for it to be number one in the club but you are talking about true situations you know people's stories and your own inspirations or that of the some people that you've been in contact with um how how have you been treated as an artist who's very specific to how you execute your art i think this will it's a problem not even specifically in South Africa. Uh, it's a problem in Africa, I think, where, you know, the only artists that we know from Nigeria are like, you know, Ben a Boy and Wiz Kids. Mm. And I mean, I love them as well. They make and terms, which I love so much. But I also think there's there's a lot to say about musicians like that are not so well known from those countries. Like, I'm specifically thinking about Neka, um, artists like Asha, um, just beautiful art. And also, I see this uh, even in in the states, you know, where. It seems like dance music and pop music is more celebrated. But I do think specifically in South Africa, it's yeah, it's the case, you know. If you're not doing ama piano or house music or gom, people like are not sure where 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 to place you. Um and I think sometimes um and I'm a fan of that kind of art. Like I feel like real music. Um, artists like Zoe, Mudeja, Simpi Wadana, Tandi um, um Berita. Berita, you know, these artists, you know, that are talking about. And I, I just think it's a, it, it is a radio thing, you know, that, you know, how much does the radio celebrate these artists or play their music? I think it's just a norm. Some people even think, you know, They'll call it like, why do you play this kind of music? Why don't you record a song with like black coffee or like, you know, they just like, why are you making your life so difficult? Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's something beautiful about, you know, soft, gentle, soul, heart. Soothing. Yeah, heart to the heart kind of music. Yeah, the type of music that you want to hear after a long day or after a heartbreak. Yes. Yeah. 
or music that asks questions, you know, that doesn't just make you dance and make you feel good, but it, it questions how you do things. Um, and I think sometimes people are afraid of that kind of music because it raises sometimes, yeah, they call it sometimes depress, depressing music. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a big fight with some other dude, some podcast in Kenya. I don't even know who he, he was, but I was, I just told him right up to his face, you are dead to me and you're so irrelevant because he was dissing boys to men. Yeah. He was like, who listens to boys to men music? They're always complaining, but it's that, um, is that bias people have on you know soulful music or R&B music yeah. that is a complaint yeah. and it's like so sad but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't you don't have to look at it that way yeah but I, like like my music is sad and I'm cool with that <laughs> like but like also like you know there's it's it's real to be sad it's a real emotion and um it's part of human being, being a human, you know, to experience sadness and to feel it and to express it. You know, mm -hmm. I think some people are, are, are too afraid of, of, of those kind of emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. What, what, what an interview. And it's very interesting in the, in the last um, episode of my podcast, I was speaking to Munye and he was also, you know, talking to me about his album Makulu, which is a dedication to his grandmother and all these stories ab um, around his grandmother and even his choice of singing in Venda and, you know, that being something um, off the usual cause. Yeah. So it's very interesting that um, so far in this podcast, I'm speaking to, you know, pioneers in their own way, but also relentless um, artists at, you know, their their authenticity. It's like, what's going to make you stop making this music? Is there anything that's going to make you stop? I mean, they've tried, you know, <laughs> they've tried, you know, I've heard some labels say like, yo, if you want to break into this market, you know, you're going to have to, to, to make some, 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 some music in English. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's far more than just the language. It's, it's an identity. It's about black pride. It's uh, how you wear your hair. How are you in terms of your skin? Um, what do you put on your body? And like Nina Simone, I think us black people are the most beautiful creatures in the world. So I think I'm all about, it. and I'm, I, it's been an influence. It's not something I, I automatically had, had when I was young, I had to see other artists uh, being proud of their culture. And like, um, it was, especially when I wanted to become a musician, so there were artists that were the first, you know, to sing in their home language and, and to wear their traditional clothes and, and, uh, it became like a statement and and I, I had to learn it mm. to how do you be proud and sort of stand up for a culture that was tried to be eradicated and made to look like it's stupid and foolish. Mm. Yeah. Did your parents and family always support that you wanted to be an artist and musician? Yeah. How is it going now? Yeah, I think um, I grew up in the Eastern Cape uh, in a small town called Zolo. And definitely my my mother and my family supported me becoming a musician. I think they saw my reports and they were like, uh, you definitely need to become an artist. <laughs> that <laughs> there's no other choice. <laughs> For real? <laughs> yeah, I, I struggled at school. But from a young age, you know, I think I, ex like ever since I knew what the word artist was, I knew that. Like, that was you. Yeah, that was that was what I was gonna do, and I I did I dabbled into a lot of different art forms like painting, uh, like I used to aspire to be an actor. Um, so like I just knew I was going to be an artist, and I think it took a while to decide what kind of form. Yeah, has anyone told you that you uh, you resemble Lucky Day a little bit? Lucky Day. Yeah, I don't know Lucky Day. Um, I'm going to show you. Where's my yeah, phone? Where phone? Bring your phone. You Open your phone. That's who I feel. But Baba Mal is way older. You're yeah. So <laughs> That's who the artist I think I look like. Uh, Baba Someone Mal. who looks like you. Let me show you. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. And then you will tell me. Yeah. They better be good looking. Yeah, very good looking. Uh, lucky. Lucky. Day. Yeah. And then we put the images. 
So if you have, if you, if you have, uh, like, uh, this oh. hair going like this, do you, do you see what I mean? I see what you mean. And I think you will love his music. Where is he from? He's from America. And I think you might have some African roots. I'm not sure, yeah. but you, you will love him. You love his sound. And to you him. got that look. My twin. Yeah. Yo, lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, yeah, so, so what's the plan, you know, for the rest of the year? I think this year has been really, um, busy, you know, for the industry at large. Um, even in Kenya, since COVID, things didn't really open until this year, like full blast. Um, from January, everything's been busy. I know you've been working very hard on the album. Now it's out. Yeah. You're still promoting it, um, planning tours here and there. And very soon it will be December. And again, it's touring season. So what's the plan for the rest of the year and what would you like to see um, happen for your brand even in the coming years? Yeah, you know, um, I'll say my big wish is to play more African countries. Yeah, um, it's been great uh, touring uh, European countries and um, eye-opening and to see different cultures. But there's always just something that opens up in my soul, you know to experience another African culture. I think sometimes we know so little about each other. Yes. And um, and um, I think it's eye-opening. The few countries that I've been to in Africa have really changed my view on on, on a lot of things. So, I and it's, it just doesn't stand right that, you know, I fly across Africa to play in other places. I love, I love to play, um, like I was saying in Kenya. Um, I'd never been to Nigeria as well. Love to play in Nigeria. Um, I love to just play in all the different corners of, of the continent. Yeah. yeah. I think this is where we are plugging Bonke Ziwe, um, a band. Like if you're watching, this is one of the best live music performers in the continent period. So there's nothing stopping you from reaching out to him. Yeah. He's on the social media platforms or you can let me know, but please, we need this guy to come and perform in East Africa and Kenya. Anybody listening, I need you to book this guy, please. I'd love to come. And also like vice versa. It's really great to see a lot more African artists, you know, um, playing in South Africa and playing in our festivals. Um, you know, I just did a collaboration concert with Blick Bassi from Cameroon. Mm. And like, you know, people like, I guess a lot of the people that came didn't know his music. Mm. But as soon as he started singing, you know, you can see like yeah. them discovering yes. a part of themselves and the awakening, you know. Yes. And um, I hope to do more collaborations like that. Um, and because there's just, I love, what I love most about African music is like how, how site specific it is. Like you can hear music and you know, this music's from Zimbabwe, yes. or you can hear music and you can hear this music is from Mali. Yes. And each country has its own. And even now with the, with the rise of the Amapiano genre, you can actually hear this is Amapiano from West Africa, from East Africa, from Southern Africa. Because for instance, like the Kenyans will be singing Amapiano in Swahili, yeah, yeah. Nigerians obviously in Pidgin. Like I, if I listen, I will tell this is a Nigerian singing Amapiano from like Southern Africa. And so yeah. even though it might be the same genre, yeah. There's something very specific to a different African country and the way another African is interpreting it. That's the beautiful part. Yeah, and I think we need to explore more those sounds, you know. Uh, I've been lucky enough to hear music from Cape Verde, Morocco. Uh, my favorite music is definitely from Mali, Mali music. But yeah, music from Egypt, music from Zambia. Uh, so you like like the likes of Ali Farka Toure? Yes, um, Salif Keita, um, Yusundur. Oh, Is yeah. he from Mali? I think so. I think, I think so and like the biggest compliment that people say to me in South Africa when they don't know how to describe a music. It's like his music is like um is like um a, a, you know music so, mix of oh, those oh, kind of music. Uh, they're like he sounds like a Yosundo and I'm like so Habib Koite is your guy. Habib Koite? 
Uh, no, I actually don't know him. We love Habib Koite. Yeah. Koite, yeah. There's also another musician I've discovered, Bonga from Angola. I don't know Bonga. Woo! Yeah. I saw you did some a collaborative project with Bolaji. Oh, Bologi, Balo, Balo, Baloji, Baloji. Yes, uh, I'm in his new film, which came out already, and it's doing really well. And I have, it's my first film in a while. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it's being received all over the world. So you're back to acting. <laughs> a little bit. I'm hoping like this, this, this opportunity opens up more more roles and more roles that I care about mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So before we wrap up, I'm just going to ask you maybe to give advice to the artists who are watching, the creatives who are watching, what should they do to stick to their authenticity? Wow. Authenticity. Uh, like I do think, um, I don't want to use the cliche that Africa, your time is now, but I do think that there's something really incredible about Africa and African music and African arts. You cannot deny it. And uh, you can see the world is recognizing, only recognizing it now, but there is something powerful with how we do things. I heard somebody say like, Sometimes when you are African, you do not see the value of what you're doing mm -hmm. because these things, they come so easily to us and so naturally to us. That it's hard for you to value it in a, in a, in a currency kind of form. Mm -hmm. So I thought like, that's really interesting because, you know, singing, dancing, making art are things that are natural to us yeah. and uh, they, they come so easily. And, um, and I think we do art like no one does it, no other culture does it. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely, I think that's one of our strongest, strongest um, um, thing that we we have. Yeah. yeah, maybe one of our strongest char inherent characteristics. You know, it comes inherently; it's natural to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we also have the gold and the diamonds and, <laughs> and the oil. Yeah. So just one of the things that is so powerful about being African and the beauty of, of being African. So in other words, you're saying to be authentic to yourself, just be yourself. Yeah. And value yourself and so value else that you're not. definitely and value yourself and value where you come from and 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 basically look within as well okay um and if you look back at the music industry um i mean you're somebody who's um quite experienced if you look back from the time you released your first album until um your most recent album that came out this year what would you say are the lessons you've learned or the most important lesson maybe? There must have been so many lessons, yeah. but what's the one thing you know now that you probably didn't know when your earlier albums were coming out um, and you would be able to share this? I think it's very similar to the answer I gave previously. I think it took a, a, a real long time. I was always sort of doubtful about myself and what I'm doing. And uh, I wish I had sort of believed in myself and in my art a little bit more earlier. Because I think when you believe in yourself, even just as a person, never mind, when you believe in who you are, you operate in the world a little bit differently and you walk it with your head a little bit higher and you know what to say no to and what to say yes to. So I think it's really important for an artist to sort of understand their value early and understand the, the, the power of, or the might of what they're doing. Hey, 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 so beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much. Those were such beautiful words. Ah, you're such an artist. Ah! All the artists coming here are dropping gems. Yeah. I feel like you guys are writing me songs. Ah, writing songs. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Any 
message you would like to give, you know, to your fans, Bongazi, Bongeziwe fans who've been, yeah. you know, with you, the army from day one, and even those who are, you know, currently pushing the new record, you know, requesting songs and videos and giving you good feedback, um, and even those who are just discovering you on this um, YouTube and podcast, what yeah. would you like to tell them? Yeah, I'm always getting that messages. When are you coming to Kenya? When are you, you must come to Nigeria and like... It warms my heart. It's because, you know, to, to make music in Johannesburg and to write songs and to be able to have, you know, other cultures that are very far from me is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And for people to connect with my music besides the language. So I, I guess the message is I appreciate that so much. And I, I hope I will be able to see you soon. And, um, yeah, thank you very much, basically. Yeah. I'm also very thankful for you, for your time, for coming here, um, for granting VIP access, this actually, uh, pre uh, VIP access into, you know, your career to take me back to your albums and, you know, sharing your story with everybody listening. It's very powerful. It's very inspiring. Um, and I really... Um, truly honored to you know have sat sat down with you and just to be in your country to experience you know the culture firsthand to speak to various artists um i'm very very thankful yeah thank you um i'm glad this happened at the very last minute uh but i'm, I'm it's, it's 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 been a joy to talk to you and I'm, I'm glad that you are having a good time here and yeah thank you Sour. Thank you so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was Bongezi with my band Love from South Africa. He's an amazing folk and experimental music artist. Go out there on all the social media platforms and follow him. His new album called I'm a Klesha. I'm a Klesha. He's already out. I'm I'm learning my click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call that? Uh the click. Mm. It's um, I guess we don't have a name for it, but the language I speak is called Tosa. Yes. Tosa. So, so Two different cliques come from 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 Kosa, yeah. Okay. It's and do the other languages in South Africa also have cliques or only Kosa? I think mostly it's uh, Zulu and Kosa, but Kosa I think it has more cliques, yeah. and the other ones not so much. Yeah, yeah. Wow, see, you guys learned the difference between the cliques. It's not one, but two. So <laughs> that's part of the culture that I'm learning. So thank you so much, uh, Bongezi. It's been such an honor. Those who are watching VIP Access, we will be back with you next week again with yet another amazing artist to take you behind the stories and the scenes as to how the beautiful music was made, how the tours were made possible. This is why I run this podcast, VIP Access, to take you behind just to know what the artists are about you know their inspirations and i'm very honored that you're always coming back here to listen to us to watch us so wherever you are subscribe to this podcast subscribe to our youtube and we'll be back next week thank you so much bye all right vip access, VIP access. with a nico on africa loud